we're looking at what happens to the water level when ice melts. And I have two situations set up here. I have one where the ice is floating in water, just like icebergs, and one where the ice is up on the rocks, uh, like in a glacier. And I'm going to draw a line where the water level is with this blue marker. So you can see it there, and here it is with the ice in the water. And we're going to leave it for a while and see what happens. It's been about half an hour and uh, it's a, there's still ice here, but I think we can see a difference already. We have the same number of ice cubes. There's three ice cubes in each jar. We can see our ice in the water here. The water level hasn't changed at all. But we can see here, even though there's still ice uh, up on the rocks, it's melted enough to raise the water this much. So. Uh, what this means is, when you're thinking about ice in the Arctic, the pack ice, the ice on the water, forms in the winter and melts in the summer and, you know, crashes around and, and, and moves around as icebergs, but doesn't really change the water level too much. But when the glaciers melt, say on Greenland or, or on Baffin Island, when they melt, they flow down into the water and then we see this change in sea level. It's been another half an hour. Uh, you can see our last glacier has drifted down into the water and raised the level just a little bit more. Our ice floating in the water is there's still a little bit there um, but you can see the level hasn't changed at all and so I guess our little experiment shows that it does matter where your ice is. If it's up on land, it will flow down and raise the water level. But if it's floating in the water, it will melt and not cause any change at all.